What we about to bring out now, okay, we're going to bring out what does the scripture say about locks? Brothers like to go to the blue letter Bible, which is fine, but you can't go to the blue letter Bible for everything, man. And, and you have, uh, we have a dictionary that we use. Hebrew Israelites use the, the Zondervan uh, compact Bible dictionary. You know what I'm saying? Get you one of these. Because this will tell you straight up what it is, man. Then on top of that, you got to understand, when you read in this Bible and there's certain words you don't understand and then you look it up in the Hebrew, I mean, honestly, you look up Esau in the Blue Letter Bible, it's going to tell you that's, that's their Arab. And we know that's, we know locks are not the same thing as cornrows. So, brothers, stop saying that uh, back then we used to call cornrows locks. That, you, that's, that's ignorant. That's just straight up ignorant because you don't have a time machine to go back in those days and, 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 and uh, see somebody walking across the hall and then you hear somebody say, hey, man, nice locks, but they got cornrows. They got cornrows. You ain't got a time machine to do that. So we got to go off of what the information we got here now and we got to be in the spirit to bring out this knowledge. So let's go ahead and start. Uh, enough of me talking. I'm going to let the Bible speak. Uh, numbers 6 and 1. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When either man or woman shall separate themselves to vow a vow of a Nazarite, uh -huh. to separate themselves unto the to Yahweh. Uh, the vow of a Nazarite to separate themselves, man. Okay? Keep that in mind. The vow of a Nazarite is to separate yourself all right um now go ahead and jump down to six Come. or five go and jump to five Come. verse five all the days of the vow of his separation there shall no razor come upon his head uh-huh until the days be fulfilled until the days be fulfilled go ahead and the which he separ uh, separated himself unto Yahweh. Uh huh. He shall be holy. Set apart. Go ahead. And shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. Read that again. And shall let the locks of the hair of his head grow. The locks of the hair of his head grow. Now let's go into the blue letter. Okay, and let's see what words in the Hebrew were they using for the locks of the hair and the words that they was using uh, for grow. Let's see. Let's, let's, uh, you got the blue letter on your phone, Ock? All right. So it says, all the days of the vow of his separation, there shall no razor come upon his head, meaning that you ain't supposed to cut your hair, man. You ain't. You supposed to let it grow. You don't cut not nab one one part. I don't get lineups. You know what I'm saying? I don't get lineups because I I got locks. I don't need lineups. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm not saying I'm taking a Nazarite vow, but I, but just think about it. Back then, I mean, when you grow locks, you don't necessarily need a lineup at all. You don't need to touch the hair on your head at all. You shouldn't have to cut it at all. You could cut the length. You know what I'm saying? If it's too long, but you don't have to make alterations to it nowadays you got brothers who cut the side of their head off and just locks up on top you know what i'm saying but that's not how we was rocking it back then uh you got that yeah. let me get um what what is the word that they use in there for uh, uh for, for this verse right? put, yeah for there it is para yeah para con uh click on click on that strongs real quick I con the definition is hair long hair of head locks Locks, okay, go ahead. And it says leader. Okay, and then what? What's the uh, strong definition right there say? Strong's definition: the hair as disheveled. The shovel. The shovel. So the definition of disheveled hair means uncombed hair. So that's exactly what locks are. Locks are uncombed hair. Okay, now. What is the word that they use for uh for uh grow? So now that we know that 
locks are uncombed hair. Let's see how do you get locks. Go ahead. The word for grow is gadol. Gadol. Go ahead. To grow, uh -huh. become great or important. Let me see this. Promote, make powerful, pray. Uh, go go down to that. Oh, come right here. To grow up, to become great, um, to cause to grow. Right there. Go to that uh, Strong's definition right there. Read that out. Come. Properly to twist. To twist. All right? That's how you get locks. You twist them up, man. You It's called a palm roll. That's how you get locks. You twist them up. You don't just rock a fro and then all of a sudden your head start to uh, mat together. That That's probably what the heathen did to get their locks. They call that free form locks. That's probably a heathen thing. But as far as locks, like the locks that Samson had on his head, like the locks that John the Baptist had on his head, they were palm roll locks. They started from a twist, okay? All right. The word there was gadol, which means grow. So to twist, when you twist woolly hair, your hair grows longer. That's just a fact, man. Because our hair was to naturally mat together. Woolly hair is naturally made made uh, to do that. You know what I'm saying? But this is just more of a cleanly or, or a cleaner way to upkeep. And people say, oh, you can't wash, you can't wash your uh, your locks. That's a that's a damn lie, man. You can wash them all you want, you know, but once you leave the stylist, the stylist is going to recommend you. They're going to tell you, hey, I went and washed your hair for about three weeks to 30 days. Keep up, keep your hair in the, um, you know, in the, in the, um, in the Mitri or the, or the hair wrap, you know what I'm saying? Like a scarf or whatever, or a do-rag, you know what I'm saying? So your locks won't fall out, you know what I mean? That, and that's so your locks won't fall out. And you, and, and, and we see a lot of Benjamite brothers always wearing the, the giant scarf over their head you know what i'm saying that that's a that's a form of maintaining the locks maintaining the hair locking together and staying that way and not matting out and not becoming flat because the lock is supposed to be round you know what i'm saying it's supposed to be round and it's supposed to be tapered at the end you know what i'm saying so having locks is actually a high maintenance hairstyle you know what i'm saying it's just as high maintenance it's having a fade because having a fade, you got to keep brushing it. You got to wear the wave crap. You got to put the grease on it. You know what I'm saying? You got to brush. You can't brush against the grain. When you go get a haircut, you tell the barber, don't cut me against the grain. I want you to cut uh, going towards the grain. You know what I'm saying? That's a high maintenance hairstyle as well. Israel is high maintenance, man. So locks, okay, we know means to twist and to grow. According to the Nazarite vow, because brothers want to go quick into that Samson and say, oh, well, Samson locks was great. Well, Samson was a Nazarite. So this is what Samson did. Let, now, let's let's find out why does the Most High want uh, wants the Nazarites to leave their hair uh, disheveled or uncombed? Let's find out. Let me get number six and six. Right? God, number six and six. All the days. That he separated himself unto Yahweh, he shall come at no dead body. Uh huh. He sh he shall not make himself unclean for his father. Okay, go ahead. Or for his mother, for his brother, or for his sister, when they die, because the consecration of his God is upon his head. Is where? Upon his head. The consecration of his God, which is Yahweh, is upon that man's head, upon the Nazarite head. Let's get the definition of consecration. Consecration means, in Hebrew, the word consecration means nezer. And we talking about the Nazarite? <laughs> so the, the Hebrew word for consecration is nezer, all right? Um, it means uh, a crown, separation. Nazarite ship, uh, the action of, of ordaining someone to be sacred office, sacred or the devoted one. That's the Nazarite, man. All right. Here, here's another here's another definition. Nazar. All right. Um, properly, something set apart. The Nazarites were set apart like we read in uh, in uh, number six and two set apart. Right. Uh, dedication. Um unshorn locks 
It says unshorn locks. Let me get the definition of unshorn real quick. And it also says uh, a chaplet, consecration, crown, hair, separation. So, so Nezer has a lot to do with more so locks and being set apart by the distinction of a man's hair. All right. And we're going to find out why. Uh, why a Nazarite must have locks? Why a Nazarite must have uncombed hair? We gonna get that. Let let me first get the definition of unshorn. Okay, unshorn means of a person's hair not to be cut. And this is the Oxford Dictionary. All right, uh, not hair that's not cut. That is unshorn hair. All right. If you took the Nazarite vow, you couldn't take. You couldn't cut your hair. Con Salaki. We know that the consecration is upon his head now. Uh, what I actually want is number six and thirteen, cause let's let's find out why the hair must be uncombed and uncut. Come numbers uh six and thirteen. Uh huh. And this is the law of the Nazarite: when the days of his separation are fulfilled, he shall be brought unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and he shall offer his offerings unto Yahweh. Mm -hmm. Now skip skip down to six uh, number six and eighteen, because now we know that uh, we're talking about here the Nazarite um, giving the Most High a burnt offering. Let's see what was the last offering, besides the lambs and and and, and everything else. Let's see what was the last offering a Nazarite had to do. Go ahead, bring it out. Number six and sixteen, and the priest shall bring them before the uh, six and, six and eighteen. Oh, come. 6 and 18, the Nazarite shall shave the head of his of his separation at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and shall take the hair of the head of his separation and put it in the fire which is under the sacrifice of the peace offerings. So the locks of a Nazarite was used as a burnt offering to the Most High. That's why Nazarites had, that's why their hair was consecrated, okay? Meaning that it, it couldn't be, it couldn't be combed, neither could it be cut because it was a consecration for the Most High. It was set apart and left aside for the Most High when they grow. The hair can't be consecrated with having cornrows because when you take out cornrows, your hair fall out. That's just a fact. Ask the lady, the next time you get cornrows, ask the lady to show you the comb with all your hair in it. You know what I'm saying? Because your hair is falling out. Because when you get in the cornrows, your scalp is being pulled back constantly. Constantly being pulled back. And hair is coming out. And, and the way that they braid it, it could be so tight to where uh, sometimes you get a receding hairline. You know what I'm saying? From cornrows. Or the back of your neck, the hair from the back of your neck start falling out. You know what I'm saying? So when you got when you having cornrows, you, how how can you consecrate your hair when the hair is falling out? You know what I'm saying? And that's just a fact, man. Next time you go get you get cornrows, ask the lady to show you the comb. You know what I'm saying? She gonna show you all your hair that's been falling out. Um, also, uh, the hair was consecrated because it was it was for the Most High. Period. Uh, and, and, and I'm gonna let you know another thing: locks prevents hair falling out. Locks prevent uh, locks prevent um, a receding hairline. Locks prevent baldness, depending on your diet. You know what I'm saying? Really, baldness comes with a diet. You know what I mean? It depends on what you eat. You know what I'm saying? If you're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and you're more on the vegan side, you ain't got to worry about hair loss. you eating more meat, then, yeah, hair loss, is, it might be prone to you. You know what I'm saying? But locks are, they, they you know, when you're getting locks done, it's not, they, they not pulling your hair. All they're doing is literally taking the new growth taking a comb and they just keep twisting as it grow because this is the scripture that brothers go to all the time man they they first go to the samuel scripture and they don't go to the nazarite scripture where where we could get the the information on what a nazarite is because samson was born a nazarite man so we need to know what is a nazarite first before we even know what who and what samson is we need to first know What's a Nazarite? Because Samson is a Nazarite, man. But brothers won't go into that numbers, man. They'll stay away from that. They'll go to the Samson scripture where if you look in a blue letter, it tells you that the locks mentioned in Samson 
was talking about braids. But I'm I'm gonna prove it, and I'm gonna prove it to you with uh I'm gonna prove it to you with some pictures to show you. You can get your dreadlocks, and I'm just saying dreadlocks for the people out there. We we call it, you know, I try to call them locks, but they popularly known as dreadlocks. All right, and, and we know there's a difference between these type of locks and the locks that heathens wear. Cause I had a brother try to come at me and say that uh East Indians, um, East Indians were the was was the originator of locks. That's a heath matter of fact, let me you got that Samson? On Judges Con. Con, hold that. Let let's deal with I'm gonna deal with this scripture right here. I'm gonna bring it out myself. I'm gonna bring out the scripture they all they love to run to in uh Jeremiah. This is another thing they say. They say uh dreadlocks is of the heathen. That's a heathen custom. So you you telling me that dreadlocks is a heathen custom because they the heathens wear it? Come on, man. We could we could we could look at a bunch of archaeology and you know what I'm saying, a bunch of uh monuments and, and statues where the Egyptians had braids. The Egyptians had afros and fades. The the Julia the Julius Caesar rocked the Caesar fade. You know what I'm saying? He's a heathen. The Egyptians are heathens, and they have braids. So how you going to sit here and say, oh, locks is, heathen, or locks is a heathen custom? Then you might as well say braids is a heathen custom too. You know what I'm saying? And, and brothers get confounded on, on that all the time because they go to this scripture right here, Jeremiah 10 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. So they tell you, oh, brother, uh, you wearing locks, that's of the heathen. You're not supposed to learn the way of the heathen. That's what. That's how they'll come at you, man. Like, real talk, they're going to come at you like that. But all you got to say is show me in the scripture where the law pro prohibits us from having dreadlocks, us from having locks. And they, they're, either they're going to be humble and tell you and say, you know, uh, you know, there isn't no law, or they just gonna keep going around and, and, and you know what I mean, just keep on going around the question, man. And that's usually what happens. You got brothers that get into the truth and cut off their locks that they've been growing since they were kids, since they were babies, man, for the most high. We know you do it, you did it for the most high, but the most high did not said you have to. Man told you to cut off your dreadlocks, not the most high. The most high said your locks would be considered as a consecration, you know what I'm saying, if we were taking Nazarite vows today. You know what I mean? But I, I don't recommend anybody taking a Nazarite vow because that's very hard to do. You miss I mean you you ain't taking you ain't drinking grape juice and it, it, you know what I'm saying? It's just what we need to worry about is our salvation, not taking a Nazarite vow. Yeah. Jeremiah ten and sixteen. The portion of Jacob is not like them, for he is the former of all things. And Israel is the rod of his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is, is or slacking, the Lord of hosts is his name. All right? So we're the former of all things. We didn't get dreadlocks from the heathen. The heathen got dreadlocks from us, and they did a terrible job at it. They, they're a ter they, they're, their dreadlocks is a terrible copy of Hebrew locks, man. Just like how... Their doctrines and their Bibles and their religions is terrible copies of our faith. The heathen always copies off of us. Why? Because we are the former of all things. And brothers will try to say, oh, you know what? Well, no, we got that uh, braids and, and fades and afros. We created that first, but we didn't create locks first. They did. What kind of proof can you show? What evidence? What? Give me something in the Bible that shows what you saying is true, and brothers can't come out with that, man. You got brothers saying that it's an East Indian custom, and it came from East India. But what they don't know is that the people that rock the dreadlocks down there in East India, they are known as Dravidians, okay, which you can find in this book right here, Babylon the Ten Book Two. It tells you that the Dravidians are the black Indi the the black East Indians, the black. I'm talking about midnight black black. There's East Indians that's darker than me. Darker than this, brother, I'm talking about coal black, okay? Those are known as the Dravidians, and some of them may be our people because they get treated, you know what I'm saying, like crap down there, man. I'm going to show you that you can actually braid your dreadlocks because for some reason Israel don't think that you could braid your dreadlocks.
This is Judges 16 and 13. And Delilah said unto Samson, Hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. And he said unto her, If thou weavest the seven locks of my head with the web. Con, if thou weavest my locks with the web. Okay, so now we know that to braid hair, there has to be a, 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 a weaving type of pattern, right? With locks, we know that with locks, you don't weave anything. All you do is twist with a comb, and that's it. You just twist and twist and twist until you get to the end of the hair, okay? So we know that we don't weave in order to get locks. So what it's talking about is Samson's locks being braided, okay? And then into a web at that, and I'm going to show you what the scripture what type of depiction you can expect or how samson's hairstyle of the seven light uh seven locks must have looked like first let me let me get that that hebrew definition in the strongs uh where it says locks because i know in that scripture alone that definition of locks means braid or braided it means braid lock uh-huh uh, plated of hair Con. So, uh, and, and that's the locks that's used in, what, what was the scripture that we just brought out? Judges 16 and 13. <coughs> Judges 6 and 13. That 16 locks. 13. 16 and, Judges 16 and 13. Okay. All right. That, the locks that it's talking about is talking about uh, braided hair. And the, the paleo, uh, the paleo Hebrew word for locks or for braid is maka what is that makalapa yeah, ma makalapa ma all right that's the hebrew word for for braid all right now give give me what you got because israelites love to run to that blue letter when they don't know that they got they have a, a book you know what i'm saying that's going to help them with a lot of definitions if they if they look into it this book right here show show the camera one more time i this book is not only used to show that ham or, or, or that we not ham, man. This book is used to prove a lot of things. Let's use what we know that is set apart. Now, bring what you got. Right. It's the definition for locks, page 325. And it says, in numbers 6, six and 5, the term indicates the unshorn uh, and disheveled locks of the Nazarite unshorn and disheveled disheveled means not comb unshorn means not to cut and their locks go ahead and judges 16 13 19 and 19 the the braided locks of the nazarite uh samson the braided locks right it said the braided locks it, it said the, the scripture we just read y'all was was uh Samuel sixteen and nineteen? No, no, it's uh Judges six, Judges six, sixteen and thirteen, and that's what it says. That's what it means in that verse. Braided lock. Right. So mm. if locks, if locks are braided, why they say braided locks? Exactly. And then you got to. It says weave together his seven locks. So he had to have locks to to weave together like braids. Okay. Like if yep. you had seven locks, I'll bra you braid them up. That's what I'm saying. And look, I'm going to show y'all too. Look, y'all tell me what that is. Look at that. That's about six. That's about six locks braided together. I'm going to show y'all another one. Look, I'm going to show this camera too. That's about six locks. You know what I'm saying? Bra braided together. Six of them. All right? Into one. Let me show you another one. Look, there it go again. Look at those locks. Braided. Braided locks. These are locks, y'all. Let me show y'all another one. All right. Look at this one. That's 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 braided into one lock. That looks like one. That's one lock right there. That's one giant braid or one lock. And these are these are dreads. These are locks braided. So man, look. That's what it is. You know what I'm saying? I just gave you a depiction of what Samson's seven locks may have looked like when they were uh, braided into the web. 
You know what I'm saying? And, and like I said, hey, um, you know, to all the brothers out there that cut off their locks for the most high, we know that you did it for the most high. All right. We, we know that that was your intentions, but you got to understand it was man's doctrine that made you cut off your locks, unfortunately, because the most high never said you had to do it. But you by but by you being on the safe side, you did it. And that's being very sincere. You know what I'm saying? And um, but you now know that locks are lawful. There's no law in the Bible that prohibits you from having locks. And I think that that doctrine is just, you know, it's in shambles now. I got paid in blessings, have the edification. It's a spiritual war, Bible and weaponization. I'm trying to build a nation. I know what presses hate it. Thought comes is what they claim in premeditated motivation. Guilty by dedication, guilty by.